I would first like to welcome State Secretary Skogan and her delegation to Manila and to congratulate uh, Ambassador Morten Hoglund on his accreditation as Norway's first dedicated ambassador to ASEAN. Uh, this is an auspicious day to meet uh, because, as you know, we just celebrated the 50th anniversary of ASEAN. And we hope that this morning's uh, festivities marking ASEAN's golden jubilee has created a deep impression uh, of ASEAN's achievements and its aspirations as a community. Having um, just met our dialogue partners in the uh, post-ministerial conferences uh, yesterday and the other day, we are pleased to have this occasion to also acknowledge ASEAN's important sectoral dialogue partnership with Norway. Norway was the first non-dialogue partner to send a dedicated ambassador to ASEAN. Considering the visits to ASEAN countries of Foreign Minister Brende in the last 12 months, ASEAN recognizes Norway uh, and its active presence in our region as a sign of uh, Norway's commitment to its partnership with ASEAN. The Philippines also congratulates Norway and the ASEAN Secretariat on the successful conduct of the second ASEAN-Norway Joint Sectoral Cooperation Committee meeting and for the adoption of the Norwegian ASEAN Regional Integration Program and the Priority Plan at the sidelines of the JSCC last July in Jakarta, Indonesia. We hope that the adoption of the ASEAN-Norway Priority Plan and the revised uh, procedures for the um, NARIP will help expand our history of practical cooperation on issues of particular significance to both sides. In the course of our meeting, we hope to have a very productive uh, discussion on ways to deepen and strengthen the ASEAN-Norway sectoral dialogue. Thank you. We are now uh, on agenda item two, I, I, I just forgot to propose adoption of the agenda, but uh, I assume we can adopt the agenda. So going on to agenda item two, I'd like to give the floor to State Secretary Skogan for her opening remarks. Thank you. And excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I am indeed delighted to be in Manila and it's a great pleasure and honor to meet you here today on the 50th anniversary of ASEAN and also on our fifth anniversary as a guest at the ASEAN Foreign Ministers Meeting. My minister, Foreign Minister Börge Brende, very much regrets not being able to attend this year's meeting, but the Prime Minister needs him in Oslo these days in connection with our upcoming parliamentary election. We are grateful for this meeting with you and the Secretary Manalu, Chair of ASEAN and Deputy Secretary General Hiru Bala. Consultations such as these are important for maintaining the momentum in our partnership and for developing it further. Norway highly values the good platform for dialogue and cooperation that the ASEAN-Norway partnership provides. Our practical cooperation is progressing well, and I will say some more about this later in my statement. But firstly, let me emphasize how much we appreciate this opportunity to discuss regional and global matters of mutual interest and concern such as trade, economic integration, maritime issues, climate change, and sustainable development, as well as peace and security policy developments. Since the ASEAN-Norway meeting in Vientiane, we have welcomed several political visits from ASEAN countries to Norway, and Foreign Minister Berge Brende has visited the Philippines, Singapore, and Myanmar. In addition, a number of other government ministries, ministers and state officials have exchanged visits. And these visits reflect a high level of interconnectivity between Norway and ASEAN. 
My colleague, State Secretary Laila Bukhari's visit to Singapore, Malaysia, and Indonesia in January was very successful. And she appreciated meeting with you, Deputy Secretary General Hiru Balan, and your discussions on issues related to transnational crime and violent extremism. Both ASEAN and Norway could benefit from closer dialogue on these global issues. ASEAN plays a key role in issues, in regional issues, and takes active part in global policy discussions. Its political forums provide valuable opportunities to meet and discuss issues relating to peace, stability, and economic development. And Norway takes a great interest in the discussions and issues dealt with in these important forums, such as the East Asia Summit and ASEAN Regional Forum. And we would very much appreciate hearing your assessment of the discussions on important regional developments that have taken place this last week. Mr. Chair, the situation in the South China Sea has been high on the agenda for several ASEAN summits and foreign ministers' meetings. And as mentioned this morning, I would be very interested to hear about the status of the framework for a code of conduct in the South China Sea. And as a maritime nation with a strong interest in the law of the sea, Norway fully appreciates the complexity of this matter. Another challenging geopolitical issue is, of course, the North, North Korea question. Norway is deeply concerned about the increased political and military tensions on the Korean Peninsula. It would be of great interest if you could share your views on the developments on the Korean Peninsula and the possibility of coordinated efforts by the international community in response to these developments. I would also be interested to hear whether there is an appetite in ASEAN for playing a role and your assessment of the ARF as an arena for dialogue on this issue. Both Europe and Southeast Asia face the threat of violent extremism and the terror threat from returned foreign fighters and homegrown terrorism is a long-standing concern. Preventing and countering violent extremism is a key priority for Norway. And we would greatly appreciate if you could share your assessments on the threats posed by ISIL and other extremist groups in the region and how Southeast Asia states and ASEAN are working to limit their influence. The establishment of the ASEAN community, including the ASEAN economic community, has been a substantial step forward. And it would be interesting to hear your assessment of the ASEAN economic community's progress, as well as how you see it developing in the face of the protectionist sentiments that are emerging in some member states, as well as the anti-globalization mood that is prevailing in other parts of the world. Norwegian trade with ASEAN has more than tripled over the last decade, and the region is of utmost importance for Norwegian business interest. The ASEAN countries are Norway's fourth largest trading partner in goods and the third largest in services. The Norwegian government pension fund Global has huge investments in the ASEAN countries, more than 15 billion US dollars. And 270 Norwegian companies are present in the ASEAN region. Establishing closer trade relations with countries in Southeast Asia is a key priority for Norway. And we are interested in complementing our network of bilateral free trade agreements in the region with an agreement between EFTA and ASEAN. And we believe we should promote continued growth in trade based on a common set of trade rules and would enhance ASEAN's position as an attractive region for investments from the EFTA states. And I would also be interested to hear your views on the prospects for further developing the regional approach for free trade agreements with new partners 
including EFTA. So I will leave it at this and come back at a certain uh, later stage. Thank you, Mr. Chair.